Good evening. Again, thank you for being with us with Community TV. And uh, this evening, as uh, many uh, evenings, we have some wonderful guests tonight. And uh, this is Let's Talk with Lou. We have a, a wonderful uh, subject uh, tonight, and we're going to talk about libraries. And we're going to talk about uh, an initiative that is going through uh, and will be on the ballot in about a month and it will be in front of all our voters uh, throughout the community. And uh, we have two very prominent uh, figures in the uh, community. They're going to talk about uh, what that initiative is about and how we get funding and the reasons for it. Um, but I just want to remind you this is your show. And uh, if you have ideas that you'd like to come up, us to come up with and do future shows with, please feel free to email or call the studio and uh, we will put it on the air. Um, tonight, we talk uh, with two, uh, two folks that, are, that have a passion and a heart for something that's near and dear. Um, both of these people have been uh, deeply involved in academics uh, and uh, education in our community. And uh, our first guest, uh, I'm gonna, I think everybody knows who this uh, individual is, uh, Bruce McPherson is um, a fourth generation Santa Cruz County native. Uh, he began as a reporter. Uh, with the Santa Cruz Sentinel some years ago, a two-term uh, state assemblyman of California, two-term uh, senator of California, as well as legislator of the year in academics, uh, backed by both K through 12 uh, uh, groups, as well as junior colleges, Cal State universities, and UCs. And again, thank you for being with us uh, this evening, Bruce. Thank you. Yeah, my lifelong interest in public education really extends to our library system because I think that our library system is an extension of our public education system and that's why it's so important that we have a, a very top quality system in Santa Cruz County. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, another one of our guests this evening is the, uh, the current mayor of Santa Cruz. Cynthia Matthews uh, has been uh, in the community since uh, 1970, so she's definitely a local. Uh, fourth, fourth year as a, the mayor, a fifth term uh, in the Santa Cruz City Council. Uh, her husband teaches at UCSC, so she's definitely got a, a heart for academia um, and uh, served as the city representative of the uh, Library Joint Powers Board. And again, thank you for being with us tonight. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, we're going to get into some of the subject matter, and since we've got uh, some of the pros that know all the, uh, the details, we're going to talk about this initi initiative. Uh, it's Measure S, and it's a bond that's, again, going to go before the voters. And uh, I believe uh, in the initiative um, because it uh, does some things for our young people. Uh, I've myself served on a school board uh, as well as a university board, a small university board, and I know how important it is to shear up young people's minds at a very, very early age. We're going to talk a little bit about that. But if we can get a little background, Cynthia, if you wouldn't mind talking just about how did this uh, initiative start? How did Measure S uh, begin, and where is it going? Hopefully it goes to victory. <laughs> Thank you. We'll start at the back. Um, it's actually not technically an initiative. An initiative is when people are out gathering the signatures to put it on the ballot. So this is a measure that was put on the ballot by the governing board of the library. And uh, that was the result of a very long uh, progression of looking at our 10 branch system. So that I think that's where I want to start. The Santa Cruz Public Libraries is a system, and it's a cooperative system with the county of Santa Cruz and three cities. Scotts Valley, Santa Cruz, Capitola. Watsonville has a separate system. So aside from Watsonville, this is a countywide system with 10 branches. And those branches range in size and age, but some of them are quite old and um, they need upgrading. And that, that's been very clear. At this point, we have roofs that leak and wiring that's inadequate for technology. So, I would say maybe three years ago, the Library Joint Powers Board, and I mentioned Bruce and I have both been on the Library Joint Powers Board, um, Bruce representing the county and me the city, um, commissioned a very thorough study of what were the physical needs of the library. Mm -hmm. And so through looking at each branch uh, and the real priorities for maintenance, upgrading, and <laughs> helping these libraries meet contemporary use, we came up with this plan. So Measure S is a bond measure 
that will allow the system to improve all of its branches up to what we consider contemporary standards. Where are the branches located? Uh, I mean, who, who's going to be mostly affected? Would it be, other than Watsonville, not being affected? But can you give us uh, locations? It's throughout. It's from the <laughs> northern part of the county in Boulder Creek down to La Selva Beach in the South County. Okay. Probably the biggest branches is downtown's major, major branch, main, main branch in Santa Cruz, the city of Santa Cruz. But the other larger branches are in uh, Aptos. Uh, Capitola has a, a branch too that it is in bad need of repair, replacement, literally. Sure. Uh, in my district, Felton is a very critical library that's very small, and we're hoping to have a new library, and we can talk about that in a little more detail. But uh, they're, they're located in Live Oak as well. Uh, let's see, where, where else? We have three in Santa Cruz. Three, three in Santa West Cruz. West side, downtown, yeah. and east side. West sure. side, east side, and downtown. So it's well covered. And I think that's important to, to know because it, they're, they're essential for many of our residents throughout Santa Cruz County, whether they're teenagers or senior citizens. On average, 500 people an hour visit our library system. Well, let's talk about that. 500 people an hour come into our community to the 10 branch uh, system. The 10 10 branch branch system. system. Yeah. So we're reaching a huge, huge amount of folks um, and uh, certainly there's a need there, otherwise they wouldn't be there. Uh, right. And let's talk a little bit about that. Um, I know for me, uh, and I'm a perpetual student, so I'm, I'm always online, I'm doing mm -hmm. research and writing papers and doing those kinds of things. I get a lot of my information online. But how can a library reach out to everybody else that, let's say, doesn't have that accessibility? Why is a, a, a library so important? Uh, and, and certainly, uh, with those numbers, they speak for themselves. Uh, people are using them. Uh, our community are using them. But let's talk a little bit about that. Well, I, though there's many who like to visit it you know, and physically, so to speak, and go into the library branch itself. But these, these are, this uh, measure, this parcel tax measure of $49.50 a year uh, would provide uh, the technology we have so people can have, uh, it can be outreach to them. Uh, we need this upgrade. We have some libraries that are, are working on 50-year-old uh, systems of sure. power and so forth. And so we, that's why it's so critical that we have an updated system to serve the people, not only those who come to the library itself, but those who want to access it through uh, online systems or whatever the case may be. And, so, and, but also you mentioned something uh, in your introduction, the importance to, to kids, and yeah. Bruce mentioned that. And I think um, <coughs> we see that libraries these days are used in so many different yeah. ways, and that's yeah. different. We were looking at some old pictures. You know, There's the card catalog, and there's the yeah. books. <laughs> that was the library. But yeah. libraries are really different institutions now. So we do ho have those that come into the physical branches, and that ranges enormously from little toddlers coming in for story time with their parents, and we have teachers teens coming in to do homework and get tutoring, and then we have senior citizens having classes, clubs, mm -hmm. meetings, and so the spectrum of people and the ways that the library is used mm -hmm. are, are just totally different now, and that 500 patrons an hour doesn't even count all the right. people that are accessing it online. Oh. So I, what I say really is libraries are <coughs> evolving to a combination of high tech and high touch. Say that again? High tech and high, and touch. high touch. Oh, very good. It's because okay. the, the access to technology, I, I would say the use of our collections now is about 30% technology. Mm -hmm. And so we have invested right. very heavily, and Bruce has been part of this decision making and implementation, a really robust IT system sure. for our libraries and amazing databases, amazing things you can get for free yes. with your library card. Right. It's, it's fantastic. However, our problem is we have these branches that are 50, 60 years old with 50 and 60 year old wiring. So yeah. we are on the threshold of getting amazing fast broadband in every single branch, but we don't have the pipeline. Yeah. We don't have the yeah. wiring to support that. So we really see that the libraries are a foundational civic institution. Mm -hmm. You know, you think of a healthy community. You think it's got a good local government, and it's got schools, and it's got good businesses, and it's got a library. Yes, <laughs> right. yes. And this is, I just want to say, this has been true in Santa Cruz for well over 100 years. Right. I live downtown. I walk by the downtown branch. Right on the corner, it's the cornerstone of the old Carnegie Library that used to be there. And yeah. that was, you know, 19th century. That was a sign you'd made it as a community when you yeah. had a library. 
And I think that spirit is still with us. We just use libraries very differently now. Yes. I, th I think when you look at some of these photos here of some uh, employees or uh, volunteers in the library system, there's probably eight or ten in these photos, uh, passing this Measure S on, uh, the June, in the June 7th uh, election will allow us uh, to have more efficiencies in our operations. Mm -hmm. And so that gives us a better opportunity to possibly expand hours as well or something of that nature. So mm -hmm. it's going to be a win-win situation. It's going to be more efficient and I think it's going to be more accessible for longer periods of time for the patrons of our library system. Mm -hmm. Very good information. I, I think what I'm hearing from both of you, if I can, you know, kind of a, a we've changed a little a kind of a direction because originally I was thinking going in is about well I act, I go to the computer, but not a lot of folks have that accessibility. I think you're mm -hmm. serving a, um, a a community that let's say is not all online. Uh, uh, young people, let's say uh, uh, underprivileged, let's say folks that are of lower income, maybe somebody that doesn't own a computer um, or that doesn't have the, comp uh, the, the, the skills uh, to be able to figure out how to, to do the research. I know when I did that first time that I did, I had to go take a class on how to access the information. And the library gives those classes. Yes, <laughs> yes, that's exactly where I'm going with that. So, so we've got something yeah. here that's available to the community at large that normally might not be available to mm -hmm. those folks and once they develop those skills at an early age uh, we're gonna ha you have a you, you sent me some information about this and there was a great testimony of a young man that graduated mm -hmm. from UC Santa Cruz and he, he wouldn't have had that opportunity necessarily because his income uh, family's income was lower so so he used that he utilized it and I, I bet you that there's a whole bunch of those kind of testimonials out there I wouldn't have made it unless I had my library. It's been very touching, actually. You know, we have a website. Everybody's got a website and Facebook, and people are contributing their stories about what libraries mean to them. And the story that you mentioned was a um, kid up at UCSC. I had gone up to one of the clubs to ask for their endorsement, and um, the kids really listened. They wanted to come phone bank. They gave their endorsement, and he came up afterwards and said, I want to work on that campaign because yeah. libraries are personal for me. Yeah. And he told this story. I don't know if you've heard this story, but um, mm -hmm. he said, I grew up in a poor neighborhood. My family couldn't afford computers. I didn't have access. It was the library where I went, where I could ac learn to use computers. I could do my research. People helped me learn how to do research, mm -hmm. and that's what kept me out of gangs. That's what got me college bound. And he's going to go on his his goal, and I'm totally positive he'll reach it, is to uh, get a law degree and be in public service. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and that, you know, you think historically what libraries did, they provided access to information sure. back in the day when there's a little library in some remote community, sure. access to information. And that's what they're doing now. We're just doing it through more ways. And, and it's important that, and the reason we have this 10 branch system is that we have an outreach. So the mm -hmm. uh, kids after school in particular can go someplace after school mm -hmm. and do their research or study in a library system, whether it be in La Selva Beach or Boulder Creek or throughout the county. So it, it allows that access to information. Uh, and uh, in, the, in the end, uh, higher intelligence for our, our patrons, I think, when they use the library system. I've had many, many parents, and as well as senior citizens, say, please, just make some improvements to this. Uh, it's, it's my lifeblood of to better understanding of what's going on in the world today, mm -hmm. and allows me to go back and access the books that I might want to read, or whatever the case may be, but uh, yeah. it's, it's well received in this county. Uh, the county uh, voters have uh, approved and supported the system before. Mm -hmm. uh, we did so for about eight years ago, but that was for the capital and, or the, uh, the operational uh, part of the, of the system. This is for the capital improvements to upgrade the quality of, uh, of, of the service that we may be able to provide with mm -hmm. improved technology. Mm. You know, I, I read something, uh, good information, thank you, Bruce. But I read something uh, recently that uh, we've got one of the most prestigious, um, high ranking, uh, Pacific Collegiate, of course, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, charter school uh, in the nation. It, it's been topped, ranked, it's still up there. Uh, but the interesting fact that I, uh, I picked up when I was reading that information was that we have some of the highest concentration of parents having PhDs. Uh, certainly the university has a lot to do with it. In our community, uh, than virtually, I think it was any, uh, any other place in the state of California. And we've got some great communities, you know, with some, some great universities in California, but right here. 
And so, you know, in terms of being able to continually perpetuate that so our children have access, necessarily they might not have it, you know, financially to go down and go to, Pacific, uh, go to a private school or, or, or be on the waiting list for Pacific Collegiate, but for everybody to have that kind of accessibility. Once in a while, you know, with young people, you get this, this wonderful jewel that just needs to be polished, mm -hmm. and education does that. It brings out the My son once said, he goes, Dad, he goes, too bad that I have to get so much education to show how smart I already am. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. <laughs> but it's true. <laughs> it's, it's true. true. <laughs> and uh, he was, I think, uh, he was a freshman at Brown at the time, uh, and, he, and he just wanted to get it done. I go, it doesn't work that way, honey. You got you to do, <laughs> do the four years, another three, and so. Um, but, you know, he had access. He had abilities, uh, and he was, fortunately, some families have those kinds of Accessibilities. And he had, obviously, he had encouragement, too. He did. Yeah. Yeah. But, there, you know, I, I run across more and more, Cynthia, families that give that encouragement, um, but they just don't have the venue. I believe that our libraries can give that venue, can give that accessibility, can give what we take for granted, that the middle class working yes. folks that are we're able to do the kinds of things that we do. Not everybody has that. I, I went to the downtown library a couple weeks ago for a meeting went upstairs, I was showing, actually showing someone around, there's a children's room, and in the hallway, there were three tables set up, and there were three adults tutoring three middle school students. Wow. It was the most touching scene, and they just carved out room in the hallway, and there was just this quality attention of that adult working with that kid. One was math, one was reading, yeah. and I know that we have a nationally famous author who comes in and tutors once a week. Mm -hmm. And it, that's the commitment wow. to literacy and learning. And it, I think it's, um, it's telling that virtually every school district in the county has endorsed Measure S. Yes. And <coughs> most of the school board members. And yes. they understand the linkage and the partnership that our library system has with the schools. Mm -hmm. And I also think it's telling that we don't have any opposition, stated mm -hmm. opposition to this measure. Uh, we, we think that uh, it's, we, the library system here in Santa Cruz County has been well received before and we're very hopeful that it's going to be well received come June 7th and people will start begin getting their absentee, their, their ballots on May 9th. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's coming upon us fast, very quickly, and uh, we're going to do everything we can to see that it passes so we can improve uh, and uh, sh improve the quality of what we have to offer in our library system. And I think a part of that, if I may, yeah. a, a part of the importance of what we're doing here uh, this evening is that um, it, it's not a majority vote. Uh, it, it's right. a two-thirds. Super. Yeah. Yeah, it's a super majority vote, which means that we're trying to encourage people to go out to the polls, make that decision, because uh, if it's just a majority, that's a little bit different uh, th than this. So we have to get people uh, you know, involved. We have to get people to know the importance. And I think that as a community, Santa Cruz certainly does that. When they know something is that important, especially for their children, mm -hmm. for their grandchildren, mm -hmm. for the future of our community, they're more willing to be involved in things that they might not normally would have done. And I think that's what this is all about. Absolutely. Um, and I, I think that, that uh, you're, you're correct, and as Cynthia said in the opening, we looked at this for three years and said, what are the needs? Okay, then the parameters of what we think uh, we can offer and could be reasonable that the uh, voting community would accept. What can we do? And that's when how we came up with the uh, the forty nine dollar and fifty cent parcel tax measure and eighty four eighty six dollars for business. So it's uh, I think we've taken a reasonable approach. This has been well thought out, and it reaches uh, patrons, library patrons throughout the county, and that's the important element of it. And it's very highly used, as we stated before. Well, let's talk about that uh, uh, real quick. Actually, we only got ten minutes. The time went by. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How did that happen? Uh, very engaging uh, conversation. That's why. There's I mean, lots we're to say. About yeah, we're talking about our youth, our future, our children, uh, our grandkids. I, I want to make one little quick point, too, yes, if I could absolutely. pop in, and yes. I, I will be quick, but you've got two elected officials up here. We've both been engaged with the Library um, Joint Powers Board, the governing body, for sure. quite a few years, but a, a campaign doesn't happen in a vacuum. So, um, as you probably know, a, a public entity, the library system itself, can't yes. run a campaign. It can put something on the ballot, mm -hmm. and that's who put it on the ballot was the library system. But to actually run a campaign mm -hmm. has to be an external committee. So we have a great community-based committee that's, that's putting a whole lot of energy, money, effort into running a successful campaign. So you've got two electeds here, but we have, we have 
yes. scores and scores of volunteers from San Lorenzo Valley down to La Selva Beach working on phone banking mm -hmm. and distributing literature and speaking to clubs mm -hmm. and putting out the yard signs. You're start, starting to see those pop up around town. So um, I think that's just another indication right. that right. is a very strong community-based sure. campaign. But, and it sounds like what Bruce was saying earlier, there's just simply no opposition. Uh, nobody's saying we don't want libraries, we don't want what it accomplishes. Uh, what we're trying to get at is we, we have to get people involved to know what it's about and get out and vote. And, and you know, our consultants have said anything that has to do with money, 20% of the people are going to vote against it on general principle. It doesn't yeah. matter what it is. Mm -hmm. So we need to get a two-thirds vote passed knowing that even if they didn't run an opposition campaign, some people are just going to vote against a revenue measure. Mm -hmm. That's correct. That's a sure. given. <laughs> so we 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 got to get that little narrow to succeed. We're actually running quickly uh, out of time, but let's talk about real quickly. We've talked about the young people uh, and how, again, uh, as the expression I used, uh, shears up their <laughs> academic mm -hmm. prowess at an early stage uh, in life, which I am 100% behind. What other group of people uh, would do the libraries reach out to? Um, and if you can talk to maybe about two or three different groups, and other than the children, we get it with the children for sure. I know, I know the Genealogy Society has regular meetings there. Uh, we have some uh, people that are from the senior citizen centers that have their own organizations mm -hmm. that in turn meet another time during the week in a library, mm -hmm. uh, it's one place or another throughout the county. So there's, I, I think it's, it's an invaluable resource for the uh, the senior citizen community, uh, mm -hmm. so it, it really reaches out and touches every one of us throughout uh, the Santa Cruz County. As I said, from teenager to senior citizen. So seniors, oh yeah, they, they use a lot. I don't know the breakdown, but community members of all ages are yeah. are going there for meetings, for clubs. You know, you got munching with Mozart. You got the author talks. You, I mean. The, there's such a variety, so the libraries are providing both access to information, but personal enrichment. You know, you mm -hmm. may check out books on tape, whatever, you know, and and um, just the social factor, too. And that's a lot of these uh, activities with senior citizens. <laughs> they may go and, like, learn together how to use their tablet to access information. So, But they do it as a group so that that social function is really an important part of some of the activities. Okay, let me ask a tough one. And I know you guys know the answer. What happens if Measure S does not get uh, passed? Our roofs continue to leak. We fail to reach our potential to uh, utilize contemporary technology. Our plumbing in some branches <laughs> doesn't work. We have heating systems for which parts are no longer made. I don't think that's the kind mm -hmm. of physical plant that our community wants for yes. libraries. And, and um, it doesn't give us an opportunity to be more, become more efficient and possibly in turn offer more library hours for our patrons as well. Mm -hmm. So it, the, all those things we have to pay attention to and that'll take up more of the budget rather than the services that we might be able to provide and extend them uh, further to the people throughout Santa Cruz County. Great. Um, the support, you've got it. I looked at the list. I, I know I, I, there's nobody that's not on there that's significant in the community. I mean, it's just amazing. Not, not only do we have our electeds, uh, but we also have business community leaders. Uh, we have uh, individuals. We have um, uh, seniors. We've got everybody that possibly you, you would know if you were read this list, you would go, yeah, I know them. I know them. Mm -hmm. and they've been in the community for four, five, six generations. So we've got this huge, huge just... Powerball of, of, of endorsements of, of folks that are behind it. We've got folks like yourself that you know put your time and energy into this, and there's a reason for it. Especially you know coming from both of your situations, you know being you know, legislator of the year behind you know all the academic uh, organizations that endorse you. A husband that works uh, as a full professor at UCSC. Um, you guys know education. You know the importance of it. So this is just not about an elected issue that's popular. It's about something that makes a difference in our community. Uh, I love to see that, uh, and, and uh, I think that our our listening audience needed to to hear this show. They needed to know um, it, with the details and why it's so important for this measure to go through. It's going to cost us not 49 bucks a month, 49 a year. Right. Um, when we look at you know the total cost of things that we spend money on. That's really nothing. Uh, you know. You it, think it, what it adds to quality of life. It, it yeah. really does. It really does. And if I could say, we do have an amazing endorsement list, but we want your viewers as well. So sure. I think our, our website has been shown up on the screen from time to time. And 
we are, you can find us, Google us, uh, our library's our future, and we love at any point to have people sign on for an endorsement, to request a yard sign, to offer to phone bank, to walk a precinct for us. Again, it's, it's not just the big names, it's everybody. And we're Good. looking for everyone's support and you can, you can send it to us. <laughs> Excellent. So give us the website. We've got it on the screen, but if you can give it to us one more time and, and the, the kinds of things that are there, I've got some information, mm -hmm. some great information. Uh, for our viewing audience, what, what will they find there and how can they help? They will find a very short description of the measure, the need, and what it will do. They'll find a more extensive Q&A. They'll find the full list of endorsers up to date. They have a chance to tell their story. Why, why are libraries important to me? Mm -hmm. uh, and they'll have a time to, to give us their endorsement, to request a yard sign, to volunteer, and to contribute. And we need all of that. <laughs> excellent, excellent. You know, as usual, uh, you know, uh, our electeds come in and they give such a, a depth of understanding of all kinds of different issues. And this was, uh, uh, again, the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I thank you so much. I know both of you are involved uh, in, in re-election right now. Um, I, I'm not sure are you re in November. November. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you're probably getting, and, and I know it's a busy time. He, he's uh, up. Let's concentrate he, on this. Yeah. Let's pass <laughs> yeah. That right now. But to take your time out for this uh, is amazing. And, and, and again, I want to thank uh, each of you for coming in. I also want to thank uh, our volunteers. We are newly located at 325 Soquel Drive. Come down and check out our studios, Community TV of Santa Cruz County. Ken Nobler on audio, John Maurer on camera, Gail Williamson on camera, and Keith Gudger, our director. So again, we thank you for listening in and uh, join us again. Um, the next time we do this will probably be a very similar type thing that we do uh, with our electeds. So thank you very much. Have a good evening.